All right, we kept it a bit quicker here between the maps so we can get back into the action after, of course, a bit of a delay before we got map one going. But uh, Double Pony, I think they were probably would be happy whatever whatever amount of time, really, they could have to recoup between the matches right there because they had a very poor second half performance. Body, though, he is a man who did not, and he's going to kick things off with an opening kill. Yeah, that seems just right, doesn't it? Exactly the man you'd want to kick off a... Uh... A second map, he had an insane map one, unfortunately, he uh, couldn't put the team on his back and carry them to a victory. Team Finest doing fantastic work to somehow stealing that one away. And uh, now, you get to see how they can do on their best map in the pool. They love overpass, they've done their best work on it as of late. We mentioned Dean earlier, just before they get this game got underway, that they have not won a game in a clean, or lost a game, in a clean 2-0 fashion, I think in around a month and a bit. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see if they can finally buck that trend now and get themselves a two hour on their best map and finish off this series. And it would give them four zero a four zero record in EACA Premier this season. So they are having a mad one so far. Should be very proud of themselves for making it to this stage, and looking such in good form. Body is on the site with the USP, and I will finally get the information. Here's the man who's got that one kill so far. Gets a second as well. Very nice tap. Afro is here. Manages to block that smoke somewhat. Now he might have a sight line. That is incredibly smart from Afro. I think that was most certainly an on-purpose smoke block there to stop that from going toward the green bin and having a clear view. And now they'll pounce on the last two remaining players. Very nicely done from Double Pony. They get themselves a good start on CT. Yeah, and a bit of action for everyone, including the players who were having a bit of a rougher game in that previous one, which is, it's always nice, just get a, a bit of confidence flowing in that pistol round. Sometimes the, the pistols are the, the hardest weapons, I suppose, to tame. If, if you're hitting the one-taps with those, then I feel like you're going to be on point with everything. At least that's how it always feels to me. They're going very, very secure, which is full rifles here on the buy. They did um, suffer against the force at one point in that previous half, and that's obviously what kind of start, started to spiral out of control. So I guess wanting to avoid a, a somewhat similar fate in this case. And it is a relatively heavy force buy from Finest. They get a scout alongside some Galils and Deagles, so a, a combo that could definitely be dangerous. We're seeing a fairly aggressive oh. hold as well here on the CT side. Joko pushed up a boost on top of the, uh, the slide there. It wasn't for playtime, though. Good opening from Robin. Mm -hmm. It's unusual you actually see that one work out for a kill. You see it a lot for information, but not necessarily for an entry. And that is beautiful work from Team Fast. Of course, having got that bomb plant, they've got a pretty good buy in this one. They can now recover the M4 onto Martin as well. Have two Galils, a Scout and a Deagle. And they are uh, basically just as strong as the Pony are in this one, if not stronger. And they're going to be creeping up toward long. Minute on the clock, run boost to try and avoid anything. And uh, they're going to be fine because there's no one watching this position at the moment. A flash to show some presence at least. But he's all the way back toward the A site. So got some time to work with for Team Fires to chuck in their utility. Of which they've got a decent amount of. Two smokes, Molotov, couple of flashes remaining. They'll be faking that long presence. And going back to board B with around 35 seconds on the clock. Yeah, they could be cutting it. Tiny bit closer for sure. Afro actually catches the lurker moving back across, so I think that'll give them even an early indication that it's going to be moving over towards B now. Indeed, it prompts them even to drop their molly and smoke there in towards Monster. And okay, um, shocks a shot straight through the smoke to go ahead and take out exercise. But it's all they're really going to get, despite having a fantastic start off the back of that boost. They just cannot find a way into that B bomb site, and Anarchus is, is just left saving while he was attempting to anyway. He's going to get hunted down by Lucky, who wants himself a little bit more. Um, yeah, I mean, that just, it goes as it does, really, isn't it? As soon as I said, as I said, as soon as that lurker is cock crossing back over towards Connector, they just know what's going on. They drop the molly in the smoke, and th there's not really much of an opportunity to wait them out at that point with about 20 seconds remaining. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, when when Shock's got that trade with the <laughs> with this, the Deagle shot through the smoke, I, I was slightly concerned that that might go a bit out of hand for Double Pony. But in the end, they're going to be fine. Body's pushing up here with just the USP. All the grenades will be doing so much damage. And he's even got support by two more players as well, so you can understand why. Body will actually even get that last kill. But in the end, it's three from Jocko to give them a clean 3-0 start. And uh, that's what they need to get themselves a good, uh, a good, uh, a good CT half on overpass. Of course, we mentioned that I'd say overpass is probably one of the more CT sided now in the pool, considering that the A1S uh, Silence M4 A1S uh, buffers come in as well, which has really helped that. And obviously, having picked this map, Team Finest, they do start on the T side, so maybe slightly concerning 
if uh, Old Pony get a run going. Some aggression toward play round again. I don't think Martin's been spotted though. Jocko should get taken down. There's no way he knows. And there we go. It's going to be an opener. Little right click flash will butt bounce on top of the playground position, but I think he spots Afro as well. And unlike Vertigo, he has his AWP out in the first round possible. Yeah, might not be the ideal weapon in this position though, when he's surrounded now on both sides, a molly in behind them as well, stopping any sort of a step back from coming in. I, I just don't think he survives here, honestly. Oh. Taking one kill would have been the optimistic uh, kind of outcome, and he's not even able to achieve that, unfortunately. It would have been, even then, a bit too much to ask of him. So a 5-on-3 very quickly being taken from Team Finest, and yeah, as you said, Afro definitely going to be pulling the up a lot more here, I'd imagine, on Overpass. Uh, I I do foresee him having some uh, some nice rounds with it, but just, this just wasn't his one. It was Mar who tanked the damage through that molly in towards playground, and because of that, it just wasn't expected that he'd be there at all because the molly had been down. There shouldn't shouldn't have been possible really, but he he was willing to go ahead and sacrifice a bit of health in order to get that opening, and it has worked out perfectly. Now they're moving back towards B. It's similar in terms of the timing as before, but there's only Lucky here to actually hold it down. Four players all lining up. They're going to be grouping up as. A massive bunch right now, Team Finest. Finally, some rotations are coming in. Exercise will be here to help out. And in comes the play. Lucky looking to get one, but doesn't at all. Now the frag has to come in from Exercise, but no. Robin hits a crisp headshot, and it's only body left. The hold is unsuccessful. They could have had a chance with that one, it has to be said. They had some players here ready and rowing to go, but not to be. Body will collect a defuse kit, and probably be able to grab the up as well. He does, but he's off to save. And uh, that's all he can really do. Nice little shot. Dirty angle, He'll be that one. Trying to build up the stats again here. He's got himself 6 and 2, I think, already. Mostly with good impact, and obviously, even though he's, he's just trying to hang on to his weapon right now, this will still be fairly impactful if he just does the damage, because obviously, this is Team Finest looking for their cool. first round. Nice kill by Kreeze. I don't think he wants the up, though. He was uh, he was running towards it, but it's not going to be picked up. Most likely, they've already got one there. That's going to be given back to Anarkes. Robin, though, he's been given he's been finding really consistent form within this roster. It seems, and it's, it's just fantastic to see. Obviously, he's been around a very long time, and uh, I think this might might be the five for them right now. That's been looking really good. Let's see Anarkes yeah. though. He's going to be facing off against Afro again, who is able to pull out the op. Yeah, that's okay, at least. Now toward B, not toward A instead. Looking like he's preparing some sort of angle towards short. He's on the angle, actually, but it doesn't peek further because of the Molotov. And because of that, we see our first Orc duel in what I think is the whole series so far. We wanted to see it since the very first map. And in our case, we'll get first blood on that one. Not just overall, but in that in this round as well. Four versus, versus four, though, because Lucky just about wins that duel. And now, even though he's down to 12 HP... You would say that Double Pony still have a shot in this one. Three players toward long for Team Finest. They have all the utility they could want. Three smokes, two nades, I think four flashes total. But there are two players close long. What a bait in this could be. Lucky on low HP holding the the wide angle. And another player up close as well. And Arcus might not even check the close angle. Robin clears it, but are they expecting a second? No way. Bomb dropped as well. And actually a lineup comes in, but Anarkes still takes it. That looked like it could have been perfect. But Body on that recovered AWP from Afro will trade it. So back into a two versus two. 40 seconds to go. Both players are on the A site for Double Pony. They have a decision to make now, Team Finest. Bomb is dropped in the open. Oh, that dud, but is it being watched? That is the question. discovers it's not eventually but now they need to worry about actually getting onto the bomb site i guess they've slowed it down so massively that it seems like double pony are actually questioning where it's being taken if they had have realized the bomb was dropped then they would have mo most likely known it would definitely be a but crease has got himself the entry now and suddenly it's left all on the body i would say the health is favoring him but with the hop in play it may not even be of uh, of consequence unless he falls back to the five seven oh. misses the initial shot that he's given the opportunity on and on top of the box on top of the bin rather he's just going to be a sit and duck really for anarchas who swings he was on zero before that round now sitting on three comfortably allowing for team finest to break the economy of double pony yeah, again, Robin looking good on his entries, but that bait up set up toward long, I really thought it could have done more. In the end, Anarkes with a big 3k has really helped them out on this one. And he's kept them in touch. Two rounds on the board now. That will put Double Pony's economy in the bin, quite literally. As the bin was the sole remaining place that Buddy died on in that previous round. The uh, five-man push toward long. Martin's ready for it. 
first flare shots coming in. No idea how he gets a second there. I'm not even sure he was aware himself of that second kill, but they all count. And in the end, they'll only lose one player. So a very, very quick round. And uh, here we go. We get to see it in slow motion. Okay, that was that was just strange. Uh, that looks so well, weird. Was it as well? Yeah, it, that looks so weird in the slow motion as well. Like just a, an odd flick. To yeah, well. Mm. It's See, fine. sometimes inaccuracy is bad, but when there's five players rushing you at slightly different angles, that inaccuracy <laughs> can help you out a little bit. Yep. <laughs> and I think Mar just found that out right there. He's not going to be complaining. Back onto the buy for a double pony. Again, the op is here. There's no kit, though. The nades could be a lot, lot better as well. They're already using a few to try and withstand the early pressure that's been shown from Team Finest. And they're not able to. Exercise peaks right into the crosshair of Anarquez, who, to be fair, was obviously probing for that peak. But exercise, he could have calmed it down a tiny bit. Afro at least returning one on mid, though, as Mar goes down. He's been lurking around mid pretty much every single round, so I think they were aware that they probably had a chance to find him there in a, a kind of sole position. So they do definitely make a good call to go ahead and hunt that one down. Lucky even drops the bomb over on B in the meantime, so that confirms the commitment's coming in. And as you can see, for now, things are being slowed down on the rotations until eventually Body deals with shocks. A good frag. That gives him a chance to do something more with it. He's actually jumping around the connector angle, waiting for it to be faced. And he actually might get lucky, but no. Afro will swing wide and deal with Anarkes. It was actually Anarkes to be the man to swing wide, looking for something in return. But I think just about as that flash. I, mm, that was a little bit of a questionable one, but in the end, Jocko gets away with the spray. And Creed will go down. And that will mean Double Pony will retake the lead once again. I think that flash what, was a decent one, but it just caught him a bit as well, right? Yeah, it bounced down, I think, so it, it, it didn't even blind them 100%, but it was heavy enough yeah. as to where he was kind of unsure as the, the guy was jumping up and down as to whether he was up or, I guess, low on the angle. So he kind of just went wild with the spray to ensure he got the kill. There you go. Did work out. He had the back, to be fair, as well, so he, he was given a little bit of freedom. He knew he was uh, safe for a second or so. But a good round from Double Pony. They're able to take it relatively cleanly as well. It ensures that they'll get their drops in. They'll have all the, the nades behind it. There's nothing really lacking at all in this buy now. So they have an opportunity to go ahead and chain them together. And with that, potentially leave even Team Finest on an eco. But for now, anyway, Team Finest, they're not really lacking either. They've got their off back out. They've got all the AKs and they'll be looking to just immediately clap right back. Ooh, that, damn, that got away with very little damage. I thought there was going to be a bit from the nade and maybe a bit from the spam. But the yeah. bullets maybe just going between the legs as you were jumping. It was incredibly close was incredibly close. And actually, they've got a decent setup here, Doodle Pony. They've got a boost coming in towards short, a late one. And don't tell me, I don't think he's even been spotted towards short. That smoke might have just faded. That's going to be an interesting one to see how that one plays out. Look at the flashes. They're superb. Exercise gets completely blinded. Shocks is the MVP on this one. Two frags on the entry, though, for Martin. Make that three in total. Incredible performance from him. And already, Jocko and Afro are looking to save. Only one answer back from Body. It's not going to be enough. Once again, Body gleaning these frags all around the place. Always seems to find one, but it's not going to be enough on this occasion. Fire bad, Anarchus. Yeah, that was. I saw that on the on the <laughs> on the player model there, and I was like, well, okay. I mean, don't just die to a Molotov for no reason. There's no one here, my friend. But uh, yeah, it's going to be okay, and it's going to be an evening round again for Team Finest. Back up to four each, and. We mentioned how it's their map. It's the one they've played the most in the last three months. It's the one they've had the most success on also in the last three months. And uh, it's, a, it's putting them in good stead, you could say, for uh, the future, for this roster. Not just now, but not just in this series, but also in the rest of Premier as well. Oh, yeah, no, Team Finest are definitely just a team that we're going to need to keep an eye on in the future and see what they do elsewhere as, as well as here, of course. Because, again, coming up from advanced and doing this well, it's it's not common. The last time we seen it was Sinners. Obviously, they um, didn't really get to, to shine too much up in Pro League either, but it was um, it was still an incredible showing from them. And as Pro League kind of went on, I think they did start to find their foot and at least starting to take some maps off the teams. Uh, obviously, the exception really was their first game, which they actually won over G2. After that, they got 2 out a couple of times and then eventually started to, to show a little bit more. But I don't think they really had kind of the, the number of games that they needed to adapt to the level of play that they were thrown into. Having, yeah. again, advanced so, so quickly up from it, ECA advanced, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, well, it's called that for a reason, isn't it? It's uh, had some incredible teams in it over the years that we now see at the top of Counter-Strike. And uh, I, I casted a few of finest matches in playoffs last season and in seasons before with different rosters and certain situations where they've looked pretty poor. And uh, it was last season, really, where they showed their true form. And, and the most impressive thing, as we've said, is them keeping it up. 
having a 3-0 record so far in Premier, looking to make it four. And already, Creed will get himself an entry in this round and uh, give him his teammate five versus four. He had a very rough vertigo, of course, as we mentioned. But it's going to be curious to see uh, how this one pans out now. Afro is looking to try and go aggressive to a connector, perhaps. Oh, he looked like he was tempted, didn't he? But we'll uh, fall off of it for now. Shocks would be here to face him. In the end, it will be a bit of a silent boost, I believe, on top of the, the shelves there in Connector. And we'll have to see if that works out, as it's a double hold for Double Pony in that position. Again, no pun intended. Yeah, it just happens sometimes. You say a word and you're like, damn, I have to say it again now. <laughs> <laughs> they are grouping up to move out Monster into a bit of a crossfire, though, if this Molly's timed well. This could go pretty poorly for Team Finest, and... Indeed, they weren't actually pushing true monster at that moment at least, so the, the burn noises don't come true. It doesn't expose their position too early. And indeed, a peak from exercise is going to cost him his life, but he goes wide getting two for his, uh, his, uh, his attempt at least right there. But unfortunately, I don't know if that'll be quite enough. They are still oh, for now outnumbered, goodness. but that nade's going to go ahead and rectify the situation. Now they've got a two on two, and with very little time for Team Finest to actually oh. get that bomb down, they've just got to stick it. And above the smoke, Afro finds vision, a wall bang being found, and and the head of Shox is going to be ripped off by Joko as Double Pony reclaimed the lead. That was beautiful. I love the initiative there from Double Pony. As you mentioned, the, <laughs> the grenade coming in takes one and does significant damage to the second as well. I think we're going to see a replay of that, I would, uh, I would hope. In comes the spray from Body. We're going to see exactly how that worked out. And there's no way you get more than two in that situation. And that boost on top of sandbags for Afro. Absolutely perfect. Here's the information. Spots an arm and a leg. And he gets the kill toward Creed. In the end, Shox had a great chance actually from this position. But Jocko swung wide and dealt with it beautifully. And the nade was really really the MVP there to get Double Pony back into that and get some of the lead back again. Very interesting round. And uh, they're trying to keep this one competitive, of course. They're starting to try and... Well, at least they're dropping down multiple players on Team Finest to pretty low economy. I mean, only... Oh, that's a fail. Grenade. It's okay. Will be avoided for now. And already a dueling connector. Jocko, oh, he almost gets a second. It was the Tech-9 to bait in the rifle. That's actually how it should be played. Afro will get baited out from Connector as well, or from Toilet, I should say. And again, he gets himself two kills. Incredible stuff. Lucky's now on the secondary AWP as well. Finally, Afro will overpeak. This has been a, just a bit of a wild round, to be honest. No breaks in it whatsoever. And now, we get to see whether Anarkes can win out a clutch. Actually, he jumps across the angle too. Wow, what a play from Anarkes. We love to see that. That is some sexy movement. And now he has a one versus one against Exercise, who is always disconnected from the action. Dean, I'm going to let you take this one now. I've had no break in this one at all. That's been crazy. I, I, I was literally, as you were saying, like it, it hasn't been going well for them. I'm thinking, hang on, though, because this is an Arquez and I'm seeing people pushing them. And yeah, he somehow gets away with it. I didn't think he'd get away with the jump across the second angle. But suddenly he gets a bomb plant. He's going to have a good bit of time to set up this after plant as well as Exercise is all the way over on A long. He's got a fairly long rotation down. Again, no pun intended. But uh, it's a good thing he exercises often, so he'll have the stamina for it. <laughs> but Anarka is pushing up in towards the spawn now. Why? He's got an aggressive stance. He's already posted up on the angle, scoped in, so he's not making any nias. And as a slow peak comes around the wow. corner, it's just not one that he's going to miss. The one versus three from Anarkes is absolutely ridiculous. But you've got to say, they gave him some opportunities that weren't really necessary. Team Finest, they tie us back up. They ruined the economy of Double Pony. And likely just put them on a force buy right now because they've got a double eco on four of those players. Here's the frag. Look at that. That movement jumping across the angle. Lucky tries to take his time about it, right? And that's not a bad thing at all. Like, really not at all to, to try and confirm the kill. There's no reason to try and hit a big flick if you think you've not been spotted. Perhaps he thought, okay, Narcos hasn't seen me. I can just swing back in here. But, uh, yeah, that is absolutely insane. That is a, a clutch, most certainly, uh, for... The record books this season. We're going to see it once again. That's a nice pick from Anarkes. Here it's comes the, the movement. The replay. the replay of the replay, exactly. And then Lucky just doesn't really get a chance to shoot because Anarkes is just faster. And it was an easy cleanup in the end, playing the angle aggressively against Exercise. And yeah, absolutely beautiful. And that could be a huge swing round in this series. Very nice to see those replays again. It was worth it. And we get to see an even game again. And Double Pony are going to choose to force by. It was their timeout. So they had a quick discussion about it. And then we get to see a Scout, two Deagles, a P250 and an MP9. It's not looking too strong, but when you hit headshots on the Scout, it might not matter. Okay, Robin, never mind. I thought the Scout might be able to do a bit more of a reign of terror, but when they line up for you, 
The AK will be a quick burst for Robin to get two more. That was, must have been very satisfying. And now it's a three versus four. Body has recovered that scout, but it is a glass cannon scout, which is a bit painful. Yeah, not ideal. It is at least something to work with. And, I mean, one positive is it was a Narquez also that they took out in those early stages. So the man who clutched him out in the previous round at least has been removed. A little bit of revenge in that sense. But obviously fully invested here. They had to buy up. They were double eco coming into this round. So no matter what, they weren't going to be getting the buy in the next one. So they are looking to try and win this one away to try and get themselves back on their feet here on the CT side. Otherwise, things are going to get incredibly difficult. And well, a flash in there for Lucky should give away that both of those players are favoring towards the B-bomb site. At, at most, one of them still up in heaven, potentially. So they do just rush that A-bomb site, get the bomb down, and with that, confirm the round win. And AK and a scout are just happily going to be saved by Lucky and Buddy. Yeah, that was quite simple in the end for, for Team Forest, honestly. Once they got the information, as you say, and I might not even be allowed to say, because look where Shox is. They look for it, but, oh my goodness, Shox. There's no need for a one-tap there. At least hold the spray. Come on. Second, perhaps? That's when he actually goes for the spray and cleans up those final two players. And that leaves Double Pony with nothing at all. And that is a bit of a problem. He comes over one tap. What was the reason for that, Shox? Just just spray. Like, you only got the kill there as well? I, I don't know. But it's fine. It made it look style it points. Fine, as you were saying. Style yeah. points. Exactly. Yeah. He's been practicing that at aimbots, so we may as well do it in the actual game. <laughs> exactly. Full USPs, you might be able to do it again here, but uh, I think more so normally you'll find the full spray downs, especially with all five double pony players actually looking to stack up together. This could be... A bit dangerous. A couple kills really is the the goal here for Double Pony. Take away a couple of rifles, maybe get one in uh, at the early stages, and perhaps even put it to use. But that's not going to be easy unless someone on Team Finest makes a bit of a solo play. Crossfires are good, at least. As you say, I mean, if you do walk in alone here, where which Martin is creeping toward this position, uh, there's a chance that you might get a bit of a scary surprise. There's the first. I think that's the information as well, because Robin's got the bomb on his back, so they'll know the bomb is now around this area. Are so they going to look to try and pounce all at once? They are. Good damage done, but Martin will once again spray them down. Had one bullet left to duel with Afro. Or only just missed it. Be a nice attempt, though. In the end, it will be cleaned up. But they do get the two kills you mentioned, Dean, to make it look a uh, little bit better for them in terms of the economy in the next round. An extra grenade, perhaps, from those kills. But yeah, Team Finest looking very good. I mentioned how CT side Double Pony could have a good chance, but... I must have really pulled it back, and you can see why they love this map so much now. Yeah. To be fair, though, if Double Pony could... Okay, yeah, they're, they're on a little bit of a weird buy here. I was going to say, if they could win out the, the round here for themselves, then the buy would be maybe limited on a couple players for Team Finest, and then if they were to win that, the eighth round would probably come their way fairly easy. But they're actually just going for the half investment here, and it's a wild charge out of Monster. I mean, that could have worked if they just looked left, to be honest. <laughs> Kreeze wasn't quite ready for it. They were all focused in on the man in what I call mini monster. I'm not sure what everyone else calls that, to be honest. Short pipe, maybe? I think I've heard short, short pipe. pipe. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Now that you say it, I just couldn't remember what other people tend to call it for some reason. Nice kill by Body, though. He's got the one rifle that they actually bought up, so he's going to get a lot more than that done. And you can see now they're Ooh. just kind of zeroed in on his position. But he's still got Robin. All right, and with low health on Marin Shocks, this is getting quite dangerous. They've got time, though. So they're going to slow it down and see if they can refocus their attention to perhaps even take out Body. Oh, this is a scary duel. Anarchus needs it, and he does get it. That could have been a bit more of a right eye peek there for Body, so it was a good one for Anarchus to take. And now with Afro low HP on 32, that should have dealt with the problem. But yeah, this is something that I've actually seen, Dean, interestingly, having watched Double Pony for quite a long time now in various guises, as I've mentioned before, either with NBK or Jax or certain stand-ins. They, they do like to call a bit of a half bite. Okay, let's go back to the round because now this is a big deal. Martin should be able to catch Afro in the back, but yeah, okay. I was scared because that was the bomb for a second, but Martin's position was going to be fine. But yeah, anyway, uh, so many instances where they have enough money for a buy with like 4.4, 4.6, 4.9, perhaps on, uh, around their five players. They go for a half buy again and they've won it so often that it feels like it's a good gamble to take because then you can go into your future rounds with a bit more money in the bank. And uh, it's, uh, it doesn't work on this occasion, but it's something I like yeah. to see. It's probably something that Body calls quite often, right? I don't love it in that case, though, because as I said, the economy wasn't that great for Finest. If they could have won yeah. out that previous round, they would have had a shot at still Ooh. coming out with eight at the half time, which I think is kind of necessary. As Anarkez just charges up short and gets a, a bit of a deja vu pick on towards exercise. We've seen that one before. 
We do get a little bit of a switch up from Joko pushing up on mid and catching the back of Mar. So it's uh, it's going to be a little bit more of an equal four on four. It seems like a very quick B play is being called for though. Off the back of obviously losing that mid lurker. And well for now, the kills are going the way of Team Finest. Both on the bomb site and also in terms of cutting off those connector rotations. And there we go. They've overwhelmed B completely. And are actually just going to run the bomb up to A now. Will it be necessary? Yes. Anarchez actually doesn't land the shot. A bit of a... Uh, an uncharacteristic miss, I suppose, but he's not going to go ahead and have a second one behind it. He'll eventually follow up and put the nine on the board for Finest. And yeah, this is why I didn't love that that kind of half bite because it only gave them the one more gun round. Uh, yeah, that's, you, you make a very good point with that, to be fair. Uh, it's the timing of it as well, right? Like, it, it, it's certain timing yeah. of that buy choice is also important. And uh, I would say at this stage, it was sort of more of a, a 60 40 buy. Rather than a, uh, rather than not. So, double pony timeout as we go to the last round of the half. It was a bit more of a sort of a wild round that one previous one as well, with Body trying to get a couple of frags in the flank from Connector and Anarkes once again, as you say, that deja vu peak as you called it, quite literally. I think that's the third time he's got an entry from short to sight in this game so far. It seems like he does that for fun. Up to fifteen and seven for him with that one versus three earlier as well. Very strong performance. And uh, the buy will come in. As you say, it's not the strongest. Two Thamas is a Deagle and two M4s. At least it's four rifles, but two of the lesser rifles, of course. And I would say they probably need a six to keep this one competitive. I think Team Finest CT side is very solid. On overpass. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah, well, for Double Pony, at least, they tend to win 55% of their rounds on the CT side. So it's it's definitely not setting up too well for them. It's a little bit more equal, actually, for the, the buys on Finest. They're 51% on CT and then 49 on their T side. So I, I'd expect them, really, to pretty much just keep up this level, same level of performance. While on the other hand, uh, I'm not too sure for Double Pony. So it's definitely a bit worrying. Some good damage has already been done here early on in this round as well, despite no kills having come in. You see Lucky being tagged down pretty low, and he's already the man who's lacking the weapon, so it's it's not really going to be helping him out all that much. Absolutely. And you know, with a minute of clock on the clock now, again, they're taking long. I really like the variation in strats from Team Finest in this half, to be honest. I mean, they've had long, they've done different things with long each time. They've either committed to it, or taken bathroom and gone back through middle, or gone back toward B. Uh, it's, you can see why they're so well versed in this map. Flash is a bit of a fail toward Long, doesn't actually blind Jocko at all, but Robin still wins the duel. And Robin's been so good on these entries and just fragging in general in this series. It's not, not someone that you would necessarily expect to put up big numbers on Team Fires, but recently he's been particularly good. Great flash, but Afri picks a little bit too quickly, and he's been a bit all over the place today, I feel like. Not really sealing his frags as quickly as he normally does, not as cleanly as he normally does, but Bonnie's in the cubby toward Long. Two quick headshots for him, looking for a third as well. It's a hard one for Anarchus to trade, but you can't peek Anarchus, and even if you don't peek him, he still takes you out with a quick flick. 17th frag of the half for him. 13 seconds to go. They should be able to get the bomb planted. It's a one versus three for exercise. And then Narquez will hit his 18th. What a round from him. He's been the star, as we would have expected. And uh, Dean, that is just an insane half of Counter-Strike on the T side of overpass from Mr. Anarquez. It's been the finest of showings from them. And uh, it does seem like at the moment they're on track to get that 4-0 standing in the scoreboard. But we'll have to see how the second half goes for Double Pony. Do they have anything else to show us? We'll have to wait to see after the break, guys. They can try, but can do it like Vinny. Yeah, no permission. I got it.
Hello oh, and welcome back to Team Finest versus Double Pony. This has been an insane performance today so far from Team Finest. A map up and now 10-5 up on Double Pony on Overpass on their favoured map. Now they're on their favoured side as well of CT side. My name is Travis alongside Dean. Can Double Pony fight back? We're seeing a fast play in toward B to start us off. Shox is on the site, gets himself one. Insta trade from Body, but Kreese is still in water. Can he be cleared out? They're going to get jumped on though, and there's more teammates to come and help out. And somehow, they can't get any of the frags. A messy one from Double Pony. We've seen that basically throughout this first map as well. First half, sorry, uh, of this second map. And uh, Team Fast will take 11, creeping toward that finish line now. I mean, even while blinded there, Chris is able to get away with that extra kill from in the pit. It's just, it kind of sums up how this game has been going so far. And he, he had a really bad first map as well. Of course, we, we noted that plenty of times. I don't want to kind of harp on him because it does happen. But he's, he's redeeming himself more than plenty here on this one. He's had some good impact kills as well. And obviously, overall, it's it's been a very one-sided show. And so far, 11 to 5, absolute destruction there on that bomb site. And I don't dis expect to see much of a difference. They've actually got less to work with in this round than they did in the pistol because they're just sticking with the full eco. They know that they need to try and get that early gun round going and find that success as soon as possible. And no bomb plot means no force buy usually. It's sometimes a bit of a decision that can be made whether you want to go for it. I think sometimes if you get some kills but don't get the bomb plant, you still force buy because you can get some decent util with the pistols. But in this situation, you, you very rarely... Go for a force if you don't get many kills. I think it was only body to get one. That's a dink to Anarchus though. He's on the M4, not farming up with the MP9, but he should be able to at least get some kills here. There's another couple for him. MP9 of Martin gets two as well. And in the end, it is a Glock recovered on Martin that actually gets the final kill. And, Instead of uh, our own medicine. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it will mean it will be a 12-5 scoreline with Double Pony having a buy round coming in, which is basically a must win. Which is not usually something you would expect to say uh, when you watch Double Pony games. They usually do a pretty uh, good job of keeping games close. But at the moment, Exercise is having a pretty rough game. 2-15. and 15. I hadn't even noticed that really until now. Lagging behind his teammates quite a lot. Only really Body has seemed to be awake, if you get what I mean, in this series so far. He's been insane on Vertigo and still here uh, for Overpass. But yeah, I think maybe the delay beforehand. We are, never know, obviously, how it really affects players. But, you know, it seems like it's put a bit more pressure on Double Pony today this time. I don't know. I feel like Finest, they're just in insane Better. form here at the start of the season, <laughs> if I'm being honest. No, Double Pony are definitely missing. They're, they're not giving us the performance they should be, but Team Finest yeah. and Current Form are clearly better. And I think teams maybe haven't looked into them as much as they should with it only being the second week so far of Premier. So we'll see how things progress as time goes on. But this is a much better gun round right now from Double Pony. They've got the entry over on B. They've been able to leave their Lurker as well. They go ahead and get a kill back on A, just leaving a, a bit of a, a nagging doubt there in the minds of the CT players about someone coming up behind them as well. And honestly, I don't even think they want to be moving in for the retake anymore. But saving is not going to be an incredibly easy task either. Although I think they might be allowed to escape through the spawn now. Shocks, on the other hand, is going to be peaked by Body, who seems to be completely aware. And there oh. we go. He doesn't even have a chance to click his mouse. It's that quick from Body. He's in insane, insane form. Honestly, if we just have Afro on the up, just having a good game as well, then this would be way closer. Yeah, I agree. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Body IGLs for this roster now. So, uh, and has done basically since the mix started. So, yeah, he's uh, leading by example, I guess you could say, if you want to use that old casting phrase. Old commentary phrase that you often hear. And uh, it's quite literally a uh, on point because he has been the main man for Double Pony today. Unfortunately, he needs to be the main man for a little while longer. Team Finest still have double the score of Double Pony. And uh, we have to see now how this buy come in, comes in for the uh, for the CT side. They have the AWP on Anarchus, of course. 
And they have a decent buy otherwise. I mean, they, they've got the two rifles still saved over. They've got another FAMAS in play as well. Shox is on the MP5, which is an interesting choice on the CT side. You would probably always go MP9, which is, one, cheaper. And, uh, okay. Uh, that dink was interesting. Body down to 54 with this play from the FAMAS. But yeah, you'd usually always go MP9 and it's sometimes surprising to see players having a favourite SMG that is basically worse. Maybe they're just better with it in general, who knows. But yeah, good damage has come in early on though from Team Finance. They should be happy with that start. The little they'll know. They'll know about the dink, of course, but other than that, Jocko down to 33. It's a pretty good start. My theory is the way he's using the MP5 is he has sensitive eardrums and just wants to silence the weapon. Yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah. Makes, makes just karma, sense. isn't it? And it's a nice sound as well. <laughs> It's actually a nice, it is, one of the nice sounding gun, nicest sounding guns in the game, I'd say, honestly. Sometimes that's what does it for you. If it feels satisfying, if it sounds satisfying, yeah. sometimes you just play a little bit better with it, even if it might be slightly worse statistically. But uh, I mean, the silencer in its own right is a pretty big advantage. No meme, no never would like you're hearing or anything. <laughs> it, it can actually be pretty helpful if you're playing what I might call a ratty position. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean... Ooh, he's, how does he see that? He has better eyes than I do and we've got x-ray. That's it. That's a pick. I mean, 21 and 7. What? <laughs> Everything seems to be going right for him in this game so far. And, you know, when Anarchus is fragging on the T side with the AWP, it usually means he's going to frag on the CT side as well. It's just a favoured side for the AWP, of course, and it's so good. Excise will get one back, though, and now they've actually got control of the B side. Here's Shocks in Water. There's the MP5. It's showing up! We've called on it, and it's here! Three kills on the MP5 on the defense. Can you believe it? Will he get a fourth? It actually almost clutches the round, but the time is so low for exercise. He has to swing right and get the bomb planted. It's going to be really close. I think he's only just got it. Wow. Point one of a second to get it planted, but he was so low. Robin was always going to finish it off, and that's basically thanks to time and the MP5. Yeah, I mean, there was a bit of damage, I think, done onto all of the players, but he still controls it incredibly well, and... Yeah, just manages to make it work. Robin's going to see if there's anything else to recover, I think. Ah, it's nothing recoverable, nothing retrievable, rather, I don't think. There might have been some nade maybe down the corner. He's got himself a smoke, actually, so that'll be a, a little bit of help. Yeah. But importantly, it's the 13th round for Team Finest. Double Pony, that was looking to be their one, to be honest, as well. Shocks gets away with way too much, as we said, with the MP5 in the pit right there. And Double Pony are going to be kicking themselves. The bomb plant at least gives them another buy, but if this one doesn't work, and if they don't get the bomb plant again, then they're they're just left in, in a lot of trouble with very likely map point going the way of Team Finest. And with that, serious point, of course, because they were able to take map number one in the end. If anyone wasn't with us, it was a close one. There was a little bit of a battle initially, then it was Double Pony who looked like they had the game almost locked, but... Obviously, that wasn't how it went in the end with a, an incredible comeback in the second half from Team Finest. And really, the momentum from that hasn't really gone away since. They've kept it up throughout this entire game. Yeah. You, you were right, by the way, about the um, MP5 having low HP players to duel. I think the, the bigger factor in that as well was the fact that Jocko was, I think, in process of pulling out his gun when he was in water and got peaked by the MP5. So I think, again, that, I mean, we, I think we saw it on the replay just before. It's... Uh, it's going to be, um, that was an unfortunate situation, but it's nice to see the MP5 show up anyway. That was a nice little way to spot short there. Did you see that? A little boost and a little jump to uh, spot to see if anyone was up toward the short sandbags. Didn't see anything. That's a way to do it with just two players rather than three in that position. Oh my goodness, you know when an Arcus is on form when he just absolutely outpicks someone holding the angle. A headshot to boot as well. He's feeling it. Anarch easy indeed. And Afro is getting completely owned by him in this series, to be honest. That's just the way, way it is. Yeah, I mean, didn't really try it on map number one in fairness, so we don't know how True. it would have went if he pulled the op out. Perhaps it could have been the difference maker in what was a very close map in the end. Bit of nade damage there onto body. One of the better openings, at least, we've seen into the rounds here. With not a lot of time left for Double Pony to get that bomb down up on A, and they line up there for Martin and Arquez. Mowing down the push on long and leaving only this B lurker left standing, so he's no hope of winning the round. Really, his best opportunity there would have been to have taken that kill on Kreeze and to have just stayed alive and saved his weapon. But that's not going to be allowed. Instead, it's an AK for Kreeze. There's AK upgrades across the board, and it's a 14th round for Team Finest, leaving Double Pony now in an awkward spot. I, do you force? Do you eco? Do you go for the overtime? It looks like they want to just try and get another opportunity to get a real gun round in play. 
I'd uh, be curious to see how it goes. I mean, again, I, I should mention the teams that, you know, finalists have beaten in this season already. They've had a win over Whistler Krakow, Gamer Legion, Forza, all in three-map fashion, as we mentioned earlier. We haven't had a clean 2-0, whether it's a loss or a victory uh, for quite a number of weeks. And they're looking to try and break that streak now. I don't believe in jinxes, so I'm going to say they're looking strong favourites to make it happen. Maybe it's more about how long it takes because we're, we're about on track for time-wise anyway because there was that hour break. Absolutely. <laughs> so they're counting that as a map. <laughs> I uh, guess. They're like, yeah. yeah. Little delay is, is our map. And uh, it might mean they need a delay to win all their games 2-0. We'll have to see how it goes. Robin will be toward heaven reloading the AK. He's actually in the open on that reload. It was a bit scary for a second. The flash is actually really good. And he's going to be flashed off the angle completely. Only gets one. And here come the Deagle headshots. Jocko with two on the entry. Be quiet. It's not. It doesn't happen like that. I'm convinced. I'm kidding, anyway. It's going to be a good nade here from Magnarchus. So that actually might force Lucky away because he's got no armor. It does so much damage to him. He's even got incendiary for it as well. Tries to get the flick, but Lucky, despite getting the kill, and Arcus possibly peaking a little bit too soon, and the fact that Afro is so low, has to pull up the USP. Oh, it's a battle between Dinks, and Afro makes it happen. I really thought that still would have been a team finest round with some good utility usage and the fact he was so low, but the lack of bullets does give Double Pony a lifeline. Yeah, if you didn't jinx it, he would have remembered to have reloaded before. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It shouldn't be too big of a deal for Team Finest, let's be real. Um, I mean, their buy is a little bit limited here. It's actually not looking too great. That was just the full eco as well from Double Pony. So they really should have had no right at all winning that one. But it gives them a lifeline. We'll see now whether it can keep them afloat long enough to get the comeback going. As the lack of utility and lack of a kit here as well for Team Finest is probably going to be a pretty big issue. I can definitely see Double Pony taking this, forcing them onto an eco, going up to nine, get the next gun round, suddenly it's double digits, and that's where you really start believing. For sure. That was just a really interesting round, that previous one as well. I mean, the Deagle headshot sure came in, but the flashes were really good to help them out. Robin only got one in that position. Martin might peek as he hears a Molotov and actually almost takes body as well. I believe that's a dink through the edge of the pillar that body was standing next to. It's a nice peek from Marty, knowing that there's a player who'd only just pulled his gun out after throwing that bit of utility. Tag as well toward Arnarquez. And this is a duel to take from Shox. It's a bit risky, but he still wins it. Lucky goes down. It gives him a 4 versus 3, but look at the HP. I mean, 39, 47, and 17. Only Robin is healthy. So you would give Double Pony a, certainly a, a pretty solid chance in this one. They have good utility. In fact, they've got three Molotovs and two Smokes. And plenty of flashes to go for a B execute here. 35 seconds to go. Like they will go for it. Body on the low HP will go on the AWP and actually wins the duel towards short. That could be a big one. Gives him a chance to push towards the site now. Shox is here towards the toxic position, but he's going to be mollied off. How many is he going to get? Just the one. It does take the orb out of their hands though, and that's a good one. Afro will probably pick it up. He does. Anarchus is toward heaven, looking to try and do something, and does. Robin does go one for one, but now it's all down to Robin. I beg your pardon, it was Anarchus to go down. Middle of the peak come in, look at the angle. You can see it on the picture coming in. Oh, it's so close. I thought for a second when Robin had forced exercise off the plant there that he might just swing and headshot him. But thankfully, he keeps his cool, and we get to see Finest on match points. It was the molly that cost them there. They missed it on the ward barrel. Shocks yeah. because of that is able to peek and take the one kill. He was so low that if they land the molly, he's instantly dead. There's no way he gets anything at all from that position. And suddenly then they have the extra man that they need to just overwhelm the bomb site. It, and nothing is working out for Double Pony. It just seems like a, an off day in terms of the, the teamwork and the individuals, unfortunately. And it, it's really compounded when you've got Team Finest who are playing such a tremendous game themselves. It, it just gives a massive contrast between the two. Because as we said, we know we expect a lot more from Double Pony. Double Pony were in this position last season when they went up, I think, 6-0 initially. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, We should expect more from them, don't we? Because we've seen them in bigger events. I believe they had uh, a, like a decent showing in the RMR before the IM Fall RMR as well. Uh, they had a few map victories. So, yeah, it's uh, we know more about them than we know Team Finest because we've only really seen Team Finest do the insane work in their promotion from advanced. But... You've heard about them for a while. It's just about trying to string it together. And Afro will finally get an AWP pick on the AWP. But it needed a four-man boost to get it. It was nice to see that boost work out. It always is nice to see that boost work out. And it will uh, at least give them a bit of advantage in this round. But they're still struggling with two Galils and two Deagles to try and keep this game going. Yeah, and you've seen the instant reactions from 
the CTs then as well to get a bit more aggressive now. And okay, they've got most of their players committed to that. At most, there's someone maybe exactly. holding a position somewhere. So we'll go forward. We'll get the, the MP9 into a dodgy position. We'll get the op on a slightly more aggressive angle, which Anarquez hasn't actually taken as of yet. To try and make things a little bit more tricky here in this round. But now he's been spotted, so Anarquez could be in a bit of trouble. Mars at least able to make the MP9 work down in connector. And for now, Anarquez is just wasting time here. That might let his teammate come back up to start helping out as well. But he swings into the op of Afro, who finds his second. Mar somehow actually wins out the duel against Body, who's been having a tremendous game so far, but isn't able to contribute here in what could be one of the most important rounds for them to try and keep themselves alive. Uh, huge information as well, because look what Martin's done. I mean, he's dropped the bomb. That smoke means he can fall back and probably leave the situation, which he will do. So he's given up the bomb entirely. I don't blame him in this scenario. He wants to try and keep that three versus three intact, but look where Kreez is. If he gets a couple of frags here, this round and game could be done and dusted. He'll be, heal be able to hear the utility being thrown in, and he will actually get checked. But it's a double headshot for the M4. A lovely wall bang from Afro, though, without having to take the jeweler straight up. But that is just a run onto the site from Exercise. That's a free headshot for Shocks. And now it's all down to Afro to keep this game alive. Can't get the first. Martin will seal the game for Team Finest. And that is an absolutely fantastic performance from them. It took a while to get started with the delays coming in, but in the end, it was worth it. They go up 4-0 in Premier, Dean. Yeah, none of these wins have been against slouches either. I, I mean, they couldn't be because it's such a stacked group. There's just not really any games that uh, that are going to be easy by any means. As I said, though, I think you now putting themselves at this 4-0 might be enough to confirm the playoffs and unless they somehow drop off and don't manage to get another single win i think they could they could afford a loss or two now within the season and still be pretty secure so they're looking good here in their first season um i'm not too sure who the next games are going to be it doesn't seem like any of them are currently set up but there's still the the likes of sinners for them to play against anonimo as well they haven't played against entropic yet either at least not here in uh, in premier so there's there's some good matches still that we're going to get to see them play in uh, and to see really how those players continue to progress as the season goes on because i'll imagine and they, they'll continue to work on themselves and just improve their general play. Yeah, and uh, I'm excited to see how they progress because, I mean, we mentioned it before, haven't we, Dean, that this season in VSA Premier doesn't give you direct promotion to Pro League, which is a shame considering they're doing so well. Um, but yeah, I, I'm interested to see if they can make even more progress and get them through, themselves through to that slot in, what is it, uh, Season 16 Conference, I believe. Obviously, yeah. that's all changing for next season but uh, i believe we're gonna go to a little bit of a break and when we come back we might have a bit of an interview for you oh no break actually producer producers just confirmed we get to stick stick around lovely we don't even yeah, have to just... run away we're gonna sit here and wait and talk about the game and have a bit of an interview i think with one of the uh, winning team teams players on team fire so that should be nice yeah, not too sure actually who we're we're getting at the moment. I think when we could, when we done it last week, I think it was was a Kreeze we got in maybe if I'm remembering correctly. But it does seem like it's going to be shocks we get to chat to this time. Uh, and he played a really strong game throughout that, so it'll be interesting to hear his take, of course, of how things went down. But um, just in general, I, I want to hear what he what he thinks of the, what they've been doing. Did did they expect to come in and have such an easy time here? Yeah, it'll be uh, pretty interesting to see how it goes. Uh, I think, uh, of course, as well, with the way that first map went, I, I'm sure, honestly, Team Funnest didn't expect to uh, <laughs> to actually take that map off of Double Pony, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I think we might have the interview coming in very shortly, so that'll be interesting to hear the thoughts of uh, Shocks from Team Funnest. Hello, can you hear us? We can't hear you right now at the moment, so can we hear us now? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, uh, hello, guys. Excellent. Congratulations on the victory. I um, just Thank wanted you. to know that, did you expect to take Vertigo off of Double Pony? Because that was a really well-versed performance. Uh, I mean, not really. Our Vertigo, like, pracks have been all over the place. Uh, I think the last <laughs> one, we lost, like, 26 to 4 or something stupid. Oh, goodness. And so okay. we went into that game just thinking, like, it's fine, boys. Like, we have two of our good maps after, so let's just give it our best and let's see what happens. And then somehow we ended up winning it. Yeah, Dean, if you want to ask a question. Yeah, I mean, just to, just in general, coming into the season, were you guys expecting to to be able to get off to a start like this, to be able to go four and zero initially? I mean, you are almost making it look easy. I'd imagine it's not. I'd say there's a lot of hard work being put, uh, hard work rather being put in behind the scenes. But especially in this game now, getting your first two zero as well, making it look so easy, as you said, on a map that really you shouldn't have have had any chance on. Is this what you were expecting, or did you think there maybe be more of a learning curve? I mean, we definitely didn't expect this result. Uh, Riggy and uh, Robin have been putting in a lot of work anti-stratting, so it's nice to see it's paying off. 
But yeah, Foro definitely didn't expect it. But we've played like most of the easier teams in our group right now. So going forward, it's going to be harder. But I think we have enough wins right now that we don't really have to worry that much anymore. Yeah, you mentioned that, didn't we, Dean? That I think four wins might actually be enough for playoffs already. So I'm not, I'm not sure that's 100% confirmed yet. But it's uh, great for you guys. Obviously, coming back from uh, coming up from ESCA Advance last season, you did really well to win that one out. And yeah, I think it's looking really promising for the future for you. Um, do you have any uh, thoughts about how the next matches could go and what's your what your next step up could be? Because right now you're outperforming. I think maybe even as you say, your expectations. Yeah, I mean, going forward, of course, we're going to try to win all the games that we can to get the best seat. But, I mean, with the pace we're going at right now, we're just aiming straight for Pro League. Not much to say. Yeah, let's go. I hope, I hope that for you. And congratulations today. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I do believe that is it. Okay, of course. So uh, thank you to Shox, obviously, for joining us for a little bit yeah. of a chat there to, to get some information about him. But, um. Yeah, I mean, he gave us some insight that they themselves weren't even expecting it to be quite as yeah. easy as it has been. He said, obviously, a lot of work's been put in behind the scene. I think he said Robin's been one of the players as well, putting in a lot of that work. And I think, that's kind of, yeah. I think that's been shown with how he's playing individually as well, obviously having more first-hand experience, I guess, looking into the games and how he needs to play against them. Because they, while they'll be telling everyone else, all right, these are the tendencies and such, he's, if he's the one physically looking at the demos, that's clearly helping him a lot in his individual play. Yeah, I, th I think uh, it's, it's looking forward. I'm going to be looking forward to uh, seeing how they do in the future. And it seems like he's pretty excited as well. As you say, he didn't expect it. As Shock said, he didn't really expect to take Vertigo. He said they had what? I think they had a couple of practices have been all over the place. I think they said they lost 126 and four or something ridiculous. So yeah, they were confident in the future. Uh, the, in the future of the series, I should say, that they could have taken, you know, their next two maps, which there were their two best maps, uh, in, you know, Inferno being a decider, which they would have still been confident on, even if Double Pony took overpass. So, yeah, it's great to see. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them more, Dean, I have to say, because they're a very exciting roster to watch, I have to say. Yeah, I'm a little bit sad we didn't get to see their Inferno. As you were saying, I just, I think that's a map where they could have matched up a little bit better, but... I mean, fine, it's very clearly deserved the win. There there wasn't an Inferno needed to, to see who was the, the clear victor, I suppose, in that matchup. But that's going to be it for us, actually, with for this week, guys, unfortunately. Obviously, we had our match yesterday as well. And um, so far, I, I've got to say, we've had a bit of a season of upsets, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it's going to shape up now next week, how Finest continue their games, uh, and how some of the teams who've yet to really get too much action going uh, are going to start shaping up as well, because there's a few teams in there with just the one win and the one loss, etc. So uh, I want to see how they start to kind of shape up their seasons as well. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, it's been another fun week of Premier Dean. I'm looking forward to doing more of these. I think that's it for us for now. Keep up to date with, I think it is esl.gg slash Premier, if I'm not mistaken, the website is, to keep up to date with all the Premier action. Yeah. And of course, esca.net to uh, check all the results in the various leagues. So thank you once again. That'll be it from us. And we'll see you when we see you.